Bonjour, good afternoon. We are delighted to be welcoming you for this webinar, the first one of 2022, co-hosted by SIF, the Children's Investment Fund Foundation, and ALMA, the African Leaders Malaria Alliance. Before we get this started, I just want to let you know that this event is available in French. Pour les francophones, vous pouvez avoir accès au service d'interprétation sur Zoom en sélectionnant la chaîne français en cliquant en, sur l'icône en forme de globe sur votre fenêtre Zoom. This webinar has been pre-recorded, but if you have a question, please use the Q&A feature in Zoom to ask a question, and the Alma team will answer live. My name is Clélia Frogel, and I manage the Alma Scorecard Hub. Today's webinar is organized to celebrate the first anniversary of the Alma Scorecard Hub. The Hub was launched in 2021 by His Excellency President Kenyatta, President of Kenya and Chair of Alma. The Scorecard Hub was designed to support country with the institutionalization of data use in decision making. It offers countries a platform for sharing their scorecard tools, online courses to further train stakeholders on the use of the scorecard, and best practice case studies and video documentaries to learn about other countries' experiences. In today's webinar, you will hear about how Zambia has used the scorecard to support their ambitions to eliminate malaria by 2023. You will also watch a short film about how Zambia has used data to keep malaria high on the political agenda, mobilize funds and engage with the community. Today, the ALMA team will also launch a new tool, the Scorecard Maturity Tool. Designed by ALMA, it is the first online tool looking at institutionalizing the use of data in decision making to improve healthcare delivery. We are delighted to be co-hosting this webinar with our partner, the Children's Investment Fund Foundation, or CIF. You will hear from Anna Akobian, their Chief Impact Officer, on the long-term partnership with ALMA and their dedication to bringing evidence-based solutions to transform health services provided to communities. It is now my great pleasure to hand over to Joy Pumapi, ALMA's Executive Secretary, for her welcoming remarks. Joy is the former Minister of Health of Botswana. Along her role as ALMA's Executive Secretary, she's also Interim Co-CEO of the Clinton Health Access Initiative. She also serves as the Co-Chair of the Independent Expert Review Group for Every Woman and Every Child, and serves on the board of many international organisations. Joy, over to you. Good day. We are delighted to be celebrating the first anniversary of the African Leaders Malaria Alliance Scorecard Hub, the flagship initiative of our chair, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta's digitalization agenda. At the heart of His Excellency's vision for the hub platform was the commitment to accountability and data transparency in order to drive action and impact. Indeed, the COVID-19 pandemic has reminded us of the critical importance of data for decision-making and real-time action. The scorecard tool offers leaders real-time quality data in a format that is easy to read, understand, and can enable strategic policy, strategy, and management decisions at all levels of government and can be used to facilitate community engagement. Since its creation, the AMA scorecard for accountability and action has been shared every quarter with senior political leaders, including heads of state and government and ministers, to track progress and to drive action. It has led to enhanced domestic resource commitments from countries and increased resources from partners. It has led to rapid policy change, accelerated commodity procurement and action to address emergencies. The country scorecard management tools are used by 40 countries across the continent. They are also testament of the power of simple, color-coded, strategic information. Their use has led to significant action and impact with countries using real-time data to respond to outbreaks, to respond to shortages of staff, to shortages of commodities or financing, and to improve the quality of care in communities. The launch of the AMA Scorecard Hub 
marked a key step in African countries' efforts to drive accountability to achieve the bold targets set to achieve malaria elimination by 2030 and improve maternal, child and adolescent health across the continent. To date, 13 countries are sharing data regularly on the platform so that every citizen can have access to the latest health data to enhance accountability and action. I invite more countries to share their data on this innovative platform, which is redefining country collaboration and helping drive the digital revolution in health across the continent. COVID-19 accelerated the need for AMA to create online courses to support countries. And today, our hub online courses are being used daily across the continent to train staff in health ministries in how to use the scorecard tool for decision making and action and in training young people in advocacy. I'm delighted to announce that in 2022, this year, we will be launching some new course material, including courses on how to use the scorecard tool to improve healthcare at community level. We have also been delighted to publish on the Hub best practices showing countries that are using the tool to improve healthcare delivery. We have documented thousands of tangible actions, such as how in Ashanti region in Ghana, community members gave feedback that pregnant women were waiting too long to access referral examinations, which led to the development of a mobile outreach laboratory unit or how in Uganda, scorecard reviews have been integrated into routine community dialogues so that local government has been able to hear directly from the community why there were low rates of immunization or low attendance at antenatal and postnatal uh, care clinics and jointly with the community find solutions. The successes can be seen directly on the scorecard with indicators showing improved performance from quarter to quarter. I'm delighted to announce today the launch of the Scorecard Maturity Tool, an innovative online self-assessment tool for countries to assess their progress in institutionalizing their scorecard tools. I also want to take a moment to thank our partner, the Children's Investment Fund Foundation, for their ongoing support over the years and introduce from SAFE our partner, advisor, and friend, Anna. Anna is SAFE's chief impact officer and oversees evidence generation and application to inform and assess SAFE's portfolio of investment in the areas of health, nutrition, education, and climate change. Her passion for initiatives that enhance evidence-based driven policy making and the use of technology to drive accountability has been incredibly valuable to us in advising on how to maximize the impact of our support to countries. Anna, a pleasure to have you and over to you. Good morning, good afternoon everybody and thank you Joy for the kind introduction. SIF is incredibly proud of our long-term partnership with ALMA and we're delighted to celebrate the first year of the ALMA Scorecard Hub with you all today. Over the years, we have learned that health information systems make health data widely available, but the high volume of information generated makes it difficult for decision makers to quickly access timely, easily understandable information on health. Scorecard management tools uh, support decision makers to quickly review performance data, identify bottlenecks, and track the implementation of actions to address them. ALMA has established itself as a leader in helping countries develop and implement scorecards to drive action and impact. We have seen the success of this approach in many countries over the last 10 years, where the use of the scorecards has led to increased health budgets, revealed bottlenecks in health delivery, such as malaria case management or antenatal care, and enhanced quality of care. More recently, the rollout of the scorecards at community level has taken the approach to a whole new level, bringing accountability closer to communities and the healthcare providers and policymakers. 
Before this uh, launch of this hub, very little information had been published on the use of scorecards in health, and there was no central repository for information sharing where governments and partners can access resources and toolkits to support implementation of tools such as For the first time, we now have easy access to scorecards, toolkits, policy briefs, best practices, lessons learned, and training guides an incredible resource for any country looking for technical assistance on scorecard implementation. We hope to see more and more countries sharing their data on this platform in the coming years. The launch of the scorecard maturity tool today will also help countries in self-assessing their own journey towards complete utilization of the scorecard and highlight suggested next steps. We know there is an increased need for capacity building especially in the form of countries sharing lessons learned and insights based on their specific experiences. So much can be achieved from fostering collaboration and we're confident that the maturity tool will go a long way towards this. Provision of information becomes much more powerful when it is complemented by actionable tools and resources that ensure take up, which is what the hub has successfully achieved in its first year. With our commitment to data and evidence, CIF continues to be a proud champion of ALMA's work, and we extend our huge congratulations to ALMA and its partners for the fantastic achievements to date. Thank you all for having me, and I'll pass back to the ALMA team. Thank you so much, Anna, for your ongoing support. CIF's support to the country ALMA Scorecard Hub has been invaluable, supporting us to disseminate best practices, which are so critical to share to ensure leaders and communities across Africa have access to real-time data that can inform, enable, and enhance healthcare delivery. As announced by Joy, we are so excited to launch a new tool, the Scorecard Maturity Online Tool, a tool designed to help countries assess their scorecards and access tailored recommendations and curated best practices. It is my great pleasure to hand over to my ALMA team to tell you more about it. Today, we are delighted to launch the online scorecard maturity tool. Over 40 African countries are using country scorecards to track progress on malaria, reproductive, maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health, neglected tropical diseases, nutrition, and community health. The use of the scorecard tool has led to significant action and impact with countries using real-time data to respond to outbreaks, to respond to shortages of staff, to respond to shortages of com commodities, and to improve the quality of care. Scorecard tools have also facilitated increased financing, and increased political and multi-sectoral engagement in health. Through our years of supporting countries introduce and improve their scorecards, we have discovered that scorecards have the most impact when they are integrated into existing national and subnational processes to enhance sustainability and drive action, shared widely to a range of stakeholders from national leaders to members of the community for increased accountability, and decentralized subnationally down to district or facility levels and used in communities to identify bottlenecks, make recommendations and track action. With this in mind, we developed the school card maturity framework to assess the use of the tool across five key success factors. One, use as a management tool. Two, decentralization. Three, public sharing and dissemination of the scorecard. Four, institutionalization in existing accountability mechanisms and political use. And lastly, documentation of best practice and evaluation of the scorecard. The scorecard maturity tool follows the country journey towards institutionalization. As countries graduate across these five areas, their scorecards are used more effectively to identify bottlenecks, drive action, and ensure impact. A scorecard tool is considered to be institutionalized 
when one, the scorecard tool is used to implement key policy changes or track key activities. The scorecard tool is used to respond or prepare to epidemics. For example, during the global uh, COVID-19 pandemic, several countries reported using the scorecard tool to monitor service continuity. The scorecard tool is also shared with high level actors, such as in a parliamentary forum or with multi-sectoral forums like an N malaria council. Best practices are also documented and shared internationally. The scorecard tool is shared publicly, for example, published on a government website every quarter or on the scorecard hub. And data are widely improved and data audits are regularly conducted. Of course, all countries will use the scorecard differently and can tailor the tool to their needs, but the scorecard maturity framework provides countries with general guidelines and best practices to follow, recognizing that no one size fits all. To help even more countries benefit from the framework, we are launching the scorecard maturity self-assessment tool, providing countries with a simple and accessible way to use the scorecard maturity framework and improve their scorecard. The new self-assessment tool helps countries assess their scorecard, understand where their scorecard is performing well and where it can make further progress, access a list of curated recommended improvements and learn from the successes of other countries. It is a simple online tool that works on computers, laptops, tablets and smartphones with a web browser and an internet connection. So let's delve into the tool. So the first step is to go to the Scorecard Maturity Self-Assessment Tool on the Scorecard Hub at www.scorecardhub.org forward slash maturity hyphen framework. There is also a link to the Self-Assessment Tool directly from the Scorecard Hub homepage and we'll be sharing a link in the Zoom chat too. After this, you just need to answer a set of questions. It should only take you around 10 minutes to complete. With the first few questions, we ask about the specific scorecard you are assessing, including whether it is a malaria, an RMNCAH, an NTD, community or nutrition scorecard, and whether you use the scorecard web platform to manage the scorecard. After that, there are a set of multiple choice questions for you to answer. These questions are divided across five pages, one page for each of the five key success factors. After you have answered all of the questions, you will receive a maturity score and a curated list of recommended improvements. Based on your overall score, the tool will assess the level of maturity of your country scorecard. To help you improve your scorecard, and in addition to the score, we provide a set of curated recommendations to improve your scorecard based on our years of experience supporting countries with scorecards. They will include links to helpful guides, best practices, and online courses on the Scorecard Hub. You can view all of the recommendations right from your browser or download a PDF version for sharing with your colleagues and viewing offline. So that is the Scorecard Maturity Self-Assessment Tool, available on the Alma Scorecard Hub, and providing countries with a simple and accessible way to use the Scorecard Maturity Framework and improve their scorecard. My colleagues will now share with you some examples from across Africa. The scorecard maturity tool has helped countries institutionalize scorecard tools for management and accountability. Zambia, for example, has become a global best practice in its use of a Zambia malaria scorecard tool to help support the ambitious goal of eliminating malaria. The scorecard was first rolled in 2016, and in 2018, Zambia decentralized the scorecard. Thousands of stakeholders were trained on the Scorecard web platform. Today, the use of a Scorecard management tool is institutionalized in Zambia's malaria accountability mechanisms. The work plan is discussed at several meetings, including weekly management meetings at the national and sub-national levels. The Scorecard is also discussed at several high-level fora, such as the End Malaria Council. The Kenya scorecard is also a good example of how a scorecard tool gets institutionalized in decision making at all levels. In Kenya, counties are actually using the scorecard in support of evidence informed decision making and timely responses to service gaps and bottlenecks that are identified within the counties. The scorecard maturity tool is also useful in the sharing of best practices and highlighting successes that other countries can learn from. 
One such example can be found with the Mali RMNCAH scorecard. In 2020, when COVID-19 struck, many countries observed huge disruption in the delivery of essential health services. Mali used the scorecard process not just to track the disruption, but also to inform development of mitigation plans to ensure co communities continue to access health healthcare services. In Uganda, the scorecard is a standing agenda item in quarterly district review meetings, which are led by the district health management teams. The scorecard is also used to better engage and serve communities. Its findings focus community systems, and the scorecard is also discussed with communities for joint problem solving of underperforming indicators. An improved scorecard helps to drive increased accountability and action, and ultimately deliver better health outcomes for all citizens. I encourage all countries to use the scorecard maturity framework and self-assess to drive accountability and to improve health care delivery in their communities. Better health and better well-being means better economies and more economic growth. Thank you. Thanks so much, Team Alma. Please access a new tool on our website, www dot scorecardhub.org and let us know your thoughts. I'm now delighted to welcome Dr. Busiku Hamenza from the Zambia's Ministry of Health. Dr. Busiku is currently the Assistant Director at the National Malaria Elimination Centre. Uh, he has been working with the National Malaria Elimination Centre in Zambia for more than 10 years and he specializes in malaria programming from the planning stage to costing, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. He oversees all malaria programmatic surveillance, monitoring, evaluation, and program management, including the rollout and the strengthening of Zambia's malaria scorecard. We're very excited to have Dr. Busiku with us today as he talks about Zambia malaria scorecard Zambia is a great example of how scorecards can improve and gain maturity as they move from rollout to institutionalization and decentralization. Dr. Busiku will make a short presentation and then we will watch a short film about the Zambia malaria scorecard. Greetings. Uh, my name is Busiku Hamainza from the National Malaria Elimination Center in Lusaka, Zambia. I'm going to take you through a few slides just to show you our experiences as a country with regards to the scorecard and uh, the work plan manager. So as a country, we are committed to pushing for malaria elimination. Previously, we had a strategic plan that was targeting elimination of malaria in Zambia. This strategic plan ran us uh, from 2017 to 2021. Currently, we are working on the development of a new strategic plan that will take us from 2022 to 2026. And this we are doing post malaria programmatic uh, review. So essentially, the program in Zambia was transformed from one that was focused on uh, malaria control to one that was poised towards uh, malaria elimination. Zambia adopted and launched the Malaria Ends With Me campaign to really personalize the fight against malaria across the country and at all levels. Our former president, His Excellency President Edgar Lungu, appointed an End Malaria Council which was a strategically placed body that encompassed and included various uh, top line ministries, traditional leadership, religious leadership, as well as top business uh, leadership to try and advocate and push for malaria uh, elimination in Zambia. This council was established in the year 2019 and immediately after that, 
an end malaria fund was set up, which was the conduit in which the resources that were generated by the end malaria council would be deposited and dispersed to needy areas within the program. So why did we get to start using this malaria scorecard? This tool has helped us to track the progress that we are making with regards to our implementation of malaria programs. It also has allowed us to be able to identify any challenges and bottlenecks. Additionally, this particular tool also helps us to manage our operational plans, our implementation and monitor progress towards those planned activities. So essentially what this tool can do is that it tracks national and subnational performance, and this strengthens our accountability and our drive for action. It also allows us to have real-time data in terms of activity progress at all levels. So we can track what a province is doing, what a district is doing, and at what implementation level they are at. And if there are any challenges or bottlenecks, those can quickly be identified and addressed so that that particular activity can be brought back on track and be achieved in an appreciable uh, time period. So this tracking allows us to improve our implementation rate for all the key activities that the program does. So this is a screenshot of our work plan manager. It has been designed in such a way that it is easy for us to be able to follow what is going on with our work plan. We have our stratified objectives and deliverables and activities by thematic area. And these are divided into vector control, case management, our surveillance, monitoring and evaluation and research units, uh, social behavior change communication and overall program management. The tool also has clear start dates and the deadlines, and it has a color-coded progress and status explanation functionality where we can be able to track whether we are making progress with a particular uh, activity or not, or making some progress in that regard. Then in order to increase accountability, in order to increase ownership and responsibility, each activity has a clear user or owner highlighted so that you can in follow individually why certain activities are not moving along as anticipated. So the scorecard was rolled out in Zambia in March, 2016. Currently, as I'm speaking, this scorecard is used in all the 10 provinces of the country and all the 116 districts. Currently, we are trying to see if we can use this functionality at a lower level, which is the health facility level. So we're trying to do a pilot in the Eastern province in four districts to see if we can use this functionality at a health facility level. And with the establishment of the End Malaria Council, this particular scorecard has also incorporated the work plan of the council and the council is able to also track on its deliverables. So the work plan has been integrated with the scorecard and the work plan on one platform and all the various uh, programmatic uh, annual work plans included on that, including that of the End Malaria Council and the End Malaria Fund. What this integration has done is that it allows us to be able to check our progress. And we review this every month when we have what we call our directorate meetings. And on these fora, all the key partners participate and we interrogate how well we are performing with regard to implementation of the various activities that we have on hand. Prior to the previous strategic plan, we had done an introspection as a country and we found that our implementation rate was as low as 36%. After starting to use this work plan functionality, this implementation rate increased to 81%. The tool has harmonized all the work plans that 
are submitted by the various partners that work in malaria in Zambia. And this has allowed us to harmonize these plans and also appreciate the fact that we can work together as a team and ensure that we do not duplicate efforts with regards to programming and use comparative advantages of the various partners that work uh, in malaria in Zambia. So this screenshot just shows you what the scorecard actually looks like. It's color coded. Red basically means that we're not on track. The yellow means that we've made some progress and the green means that we're on track. We have selected key performance indicators that cover vector control, that cover case management and surveillance. And from this scorecard, you can be able to see what the national indicator is for those key indicators that have been selected. You can drill down to a province and you can also drill down even to a district uh, level. And this allows us to be able to interrogate where we are not doing well and put in measures to improve our performance. And this is part of the scorecard where we have our work plan functionality. As you can see from the screenshot above, each thematic area has a clearly outlined objective. And to address that particular objective, the various activities are then created and tailored to meet what that particular objective uh, is. And from this particular functionality, you can have the work plan for the whole country. You can drill down to a province. You can also drill down to a district and be able to see what each district, each province's contribution is to the overall objective and also whether they are on track or not on track with their implementation. So this screenshot essentially is highlighting how we input our activities. There's an overall arching activity in the bolt, and then sub activities that are associated with that overall activity that are placed right underneath that particular overarching uh, activity. And each one of those has a specific date when it's supposed to be implemented and a specific date when it's supposed to end. And of course, we indicate as well who the users are or who is accountable for that particular activity and then we can be able to track whether this activity is on track, whether we are off track, or whether we are making some progress. And this is just to demonstrate the overall performance. At any given time, if I draw your attention to the top most of the actual table, you will notice that you can have a summary of your overall performance with regards to the scorecard. So in this particular case, at the time when we took this screenshot, we had 21% of the activities had been completed, 1% had some progress, and 7% were not due, and overdue was 71%. So that meant that we needed to start interrogating why we had so many activities that were overdue, why they were not completed, and begin to quickly address those issues and so that we would have more greens than reds or more oranges than reds. So the key outcomes really uh, of the scorecard is that it stimulates action to address any underperforming indicators. This is very important for us to be able to get on track with our programming. It also improves the level of accountability and transparency of the program and across the programmatic uh, partnership. It also improves the decision-making processes of program management and also facilitates engagement and resource mobilization by all partners. And as an example, we had used this scorecard and we use this scorecard to present to the End Malaria Council the status of malaria programming we had a situation not so long ago where we had challenges with availability of sulfadoxin pyrethroni, which is used in intermittent presumptive therapy in pregnant women. This was flagged by the scorecard and that particular indicator was in red. And the chair of the End Malaria Council at the time 
who happens to be the Minister of Health, asked why there was rent. And within that particular framework, it was able to be discussed. The minister was able to make a commitment that government would make funds immediately available to address the situation. And because of that intervention, the other partners that were present at the time that were not intending to actually support the procurement of sulfadoxin pyrethromy also said they would relook really at their budgets and their commitments and then came back and were able to, to begin to support the procurement of uh, sulfadoxin pyrethromine for intermittent presumptive therapy in pregnancy. So this is an example of how the scorecard can be used as an advocacy tool at a very high level for us to be able to address any challenges that may come uh, on board. So in terms of next steps, Every year we develop an annual work plan, and this is done initially centrally with all the partners at the central level. Then there's a trickle down to the provinces and then the districts. And then potentially in future, depending on the findings of the pilot, this will probably be done as well at a health facility level and also at a community level uh, based on the findings of, 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 of the pilot that we're conducting. We envision that at a community level, this scorecard will be used to track the activities of our community health workers, or community health volunteers, review any key indicators at a more micro granular level, and also enhance discussions on how interventions are being implemented and how these, if at all their challenges, can be addressed within a community level framework. And of course, promote what we call community champions and champion communities, essentially populations or individuals that are like best examples of how we're supposed to be able to conduct our programming uh, in those particular communities, and then hopefully influence positive behaviors towards malaria elimination in that uh, community. We continue to always consult with our provincial health uh, offices, our district health offices, and also the facilities on how we can improve uh, this particular platform, how usable it is and how easy it is to understand and to interpret so that we foster its use uh, at all these levels to improve our service uh, delivery. We continue, of course, to do capacity building in this regard and also conduct refresher trainings uh, for those that utilize this particular platform in order to push the envelope around improving the quality of care of health services. This tool is in the process of being adopted by a Ministry of Health multi-sectorial task team in terms of how this tool can actually be used to track quality of care at a community level. And this of course goes beyond just malaria, but essentially uh, a health quality uh, assurance or quality control uh, platform to help overall health uh, service delivery improvement. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye for now. Thank you, Dr. Busiku. Uh, Zambia is one of the countries leading the way in the implementation of the scorecard. Before we answer some of the audience pre-submitted questions, we just want to show you a short film about Zambia's scorecard. Over the past 10 years, Zambia has made significant progress in reducing the malaria burden. However, the disease is still a major public health challenge and remains endemic across all 10 provinces. To improve its performance in tackling malaria, the Zambian government and its partners have further developed the use of the malaria scorecard, first adopted in 2016. Not only does the scorecard allow the government to track progress against key malaria indicators nationally, but Zambia has expanded its use to focus action at the regional level as well. The scorecard is also reviewed every quarter by the End Malaria Council. 
convened by the President of the Republic of Zambia and chaired by the Minister of Health, the End Malaria Council is comprised of representatives from government, business and the community. Having such a high-level forum review, the scorecard has led to significant action. For example, in October 2019, the National Malaria Elimination Center presented the scorecard at an EMC meeting and outlined that one key indicator was underperforming. This indicator tracked how many pregnant women were receiving three doses of a drug to prevent malaria during pregnancy. Commitments were made, and by the next meeting, it was confirmed that 2,450 teens of SP worth 230,000 US dollars were received and distributed to the provinces. In 2018, Zambia was the first country to pilot the scorecard's new functionality, the Work Plan Manager tool. This new feature allows all provinces to harmonize and upload their work plans. Government at national, provincial and district level, as well as their partners, are now able to follow the implementation of the planned activities, review performance and identify and address bottlenecks. The work plan manager feature has led to a significant increase in Zambia's 2019 operational plan implementation rates. An 80% implementation rate was achieved in 2019 compared to the average of 36% that was achieved in 2016 prior to the rollout of the new tool. With innovative tools such as the Malaria Scorecard and its work plan feature, Zambia has become a leader in evidence-based decision making. These tools have strengthened the government's ability to coordinate partner support, improved data quality, and led to increased resources to achieve the ambitious goal of malaria elimination by 2023. Dr. Busiku, the first question is for you. What have been the key challenges in the implementation of the scorecard in Zambia? And what advice do you have for other countries? So one of the key challenges that we have experienced with using the, the scorecard has been the issue of around connectivity, actually. Um, we do have challenges with uh, internet connectivity across the country. Um, and this affects uh, how we can access uh, the, the tool. However, uh, when we raised this with the developers, they were able to assist us because the tool has a functionality of you being able to download um, your, your work plan and you can have an update in terms of your progress and where you are um, with your program implementation. So that has really been very, very helpful. and as, uh, uh, helped us um, overcome that particular challenge of, 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 of connectivity. With regard to advice to other countries, I would advise other countries to, to use this particular platform. It helps you track your program implementation. It helps you track your key indicators. And this is very important because at any given time, it's important for us to know where we are with regards to our malaria programming. And it allows us to then address any challenges almost in real time. And the fact that it is web-based and it is available to the broad partnership, it allows also for other partners to see what is happening and be able to either suggest solutions or be able to come in and address that particular uh, issue that has uh, risen.
and, and it is done in, in, in collectively. Additionally, it allows for this transparency uh, across the program. My additional advice to countries is try it and use it and let it just be uh, something that is used as part of your daily management approach. We use it every month to be able to check the program performance for all the thematic areas. And then we are able to get responses as to why certain activities are not happening or as to why certain challenges have arisen. And this, we then begin to brainstorm, figure out together and plot a way forward. And this is also done not only at a central level with the NMEC, but also at provincial as well as district level. Joy, um, this question has been asked many times. Why do you think it's so critical for sh countries to share their school cards on the hub? There is full evidence-based appreciation that infectious diseases pose a real threat to health and overall success of the economies at community and national and global level. The scorecard tool uses data to measure the burden of disease like malaria, neglected tropical diseases and others, as well as their toll on the social and economic development of communities and therefore of the continent. Using the scorecard management tool allows everyone to track progress and keeps managers and leaders at all levels accountable. I invite more countries to share their data on this innovative platform, which is redefining country collaboration and helping drive the digital revolution in health across the continent. It is only by using real-time data that we can identify bottlenecks early, allowing us to take action. This will also enhance our ability to course correct and to also respond to future pandemics, enhancing our pandemic preparedness and response. So this question is for Melanie. Dr. Melanie Renshaw serves as ALMA's Chief Technical Advisor and she oversees all of the work of the ALMA technical team including the development of the ALMA scorecard for action and accountability, the support to the country uh, RMNCH and malaria scorecards, and the malaria councils. Dr. Renshaw also serves as co-chair of the RBM Country and Regional Support Partner Committee. So Melanie, this question was for you. A lot of people asked, why did ALMA create a scorecard maturity framework? Why this tool? At ALMA, we designed the scorecard maturity tool to help countries to assess how their scorecards are performing against scorecard best practices, and also to help them then to determine what the next steps are to further enhance the institutionalization of their scorecards. By completing simple questions, the tool then recommends key next steps in the use of the scorecard. For example, it's used as a management tool in decentralization, in public sharing, in institutionalization and political level advocacy. These example next steps are based on positive country experiences to date. So the nice thing about the scorecard tool is it allows countries to learn from more mature and advanced scorecard tools in their neighboring countries. And then it allows countries to track their own progress in a systematic way over time. Diego, I just want to ask you, why do you think countries should complete a self-assessment on the scorecard maturity tool? There's actually a lot of value in doing a self-assessment because the scorecard maturity framework allows you to really identify what are the things that the country must work on in order to further institutionalize the tool. So this might include um, opportunities to strengthen the use of the action tracker to ensure that the data is used for action. This may include uh, training members of parliament or high level actors. And so the scorecard maturity tool allows you to really assess where are your gaps in, in scorecard implementation. And then there are very clear recommendations which will allow you to, to sort of develop a roadmap um, with next steps for your scorecard, which Alma, of course, would be, would be happy to help with, with implementing. Uh, so, so actually the scorecard maturity assessment tool 
can add great value to, to reflecting on what opportunities exist to further strengthen your scorecard. To end this webinar, I would like to welcome Dr. Elizabeth Chizema to share her vision for the hub for the upcoming year. Dr. Elizabeth Chizema is the Zambia's N Malaria Council's Secretary Officer and the Alma Scorecard Hub Lead. Prior to this, she was the Director of the National Malaria Eliminations Programme, charged with the goal to eliminate malaria in Zambia. In this role, she helped raise the profile for Zambia's malaria control and elimination efforts, achieving remarkable reductions in malaria morbidity and mortality. Elizabeth, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much. Let me share with you the, briefly on the Alma Scorecard Hub. The Alma Scorecard Hub, which is the flagship of the initiative of the Alma Chair, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, aims to enhance digitalization and public access to health data. It is also a repository for best practices and training material on how best to use data for decision making, providing practical examples and case studies on how to use data for decision making. Looking at the Alma Scorecard Hub, it is one, a public directory of scorecards shared by African countries. It also has country based practices highlighting how countries have used scorecard tools. We have on the Scorecard Hub guides and toolkits to help countries create analyze and improve scorecard tools. We have also developed online courses to help countries decentralize scorecard tools. We are able to host events and webinars on the hub to encourage countries to share their experiences of using scorecard tools, which will also help other countries. And we also provide technical support. Uh, what's our, been our progress so far on the Alma scorecard? The Scorecard Hub was launched on the 10th of February 2021, and so far we are proud to indicate that 13 countries have shared their scorecards on the Hub. This includes 10 countries regularly sharing their malaria scorecards, 7 countries share their RMNCH scorecards, and already 4 countries share their NTD uh, scorecards. We have also documented the best practices and so far there are already 44 best practices that are available on the hub, covering case studies from 14 countries. 16 on malaria, 15 on RMNCH, and 18 on community scorecard best practices, as well as seven for the neglected tropical diseases. As you recall, I'd indicated that we've also developed online courses. So far we have five online courses available and this includes the newly uh, developed course on creating smart actions. And I would encourage all of you to take these courses. 15 countries have benefited from using the online course material in their country missions. And uh, the courses are actually translated into three languages, Portuguese, English, and French. And already 1,500 people have been awarded courses or certificates for the ALMA courses that they have taken. What is our vision for 2022? In 2022, we plan to continue to support countries to share their scorecard on the hub so that all citizens can have access to the quality data and help with action and decision making. We also hope to launch three new courses including a course to support our youth champions with advocacy for malaria elimination and the course to support community engagement with the scorecard. We also plan to continue to support countries uh, document their best practice and the production of high quality case studies as well as video documentaries. How can you support us? How can you support the Alma Hub? We will be happy if you could document actions taken as a result of the use of a scorecard and send it to us. Also to send us your feedback on the online courses and tell us what new content you would like to see. You could also partner with us to support countries in enhancing the use of data for action and accountability. As we have launched the online tool, online 
scored at maturity too. I also call upon all of you to complete the self-assessment too for your scorecard and send us the results. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Elizabeth. We are so exciting for the future of the Hub. Thank you so much to all for attending today's webinar. I would like to thank Thif for co-hosting with Alma. Thank you, Anna, Dr. Busiku, and everybody from Team Alma. Today, we launched the Alma Scorecard Maturity Tool, an innovative new tool designed to support countries improve the use of their scorecard for action and accountability. We would like to encourage all countries to complete a self-assessment. It only takes 10 minutes and then allows you to access curated recommendations and technical assistance from Alma. We will be hosting our next webinar on March 16th for Commonwealth Day to celebrate Commonwealth countries' achievements in the fight to eliminate malaria and neglected tropical diseases. If you haven't yet subscribed to our newsletter, please do so to keep in touch with us. Thank you and see you next time.